Good day learners. Today we will be discussing about economies of scope and learning curve. After completion of this course, you will be able to understand what is economies of scope, production possibility curves of economies and diseconomies of scope, the degrees of economics or uh, economies of scope, what is learning curve, and the significance of learning curve. So let's begin this lecture. See, by term economies and diseconomies of scope, what we mean that when a firm is trying to produce two or more than two outputs, then whether it will be an economical scenario for the firm or whether it won't be an economical scenario. See, hypothetically speaking, a firm, let's say, is manufacturing two products, car and trucks. If by producing both these two outputs, that is car and truck, the firm is able to achieve economies in production, then it is known as economies of scope. If the firm is not able to make the economies by producing two outputs, then it is known as diseconomies. In simpler terms, if there is an advantage that occurs when the firm use the inputs in a joint manner and attains economies of production, then it is known as economies of scope. If the firm joint output gives less benefit as compared to producing both the outputs separately, then it is known as diseconomies of scope. These economies and diseconomies of scope can be easily understood on the basis of production possibility curve. Now see, production possibility curve is a curve that gives the units of two different outputs that can be produced utilizing the same amount of or same type of resources. Now, let's assume these are two production possibilities curve of car and truck of car and truck if the production possibility curve is a straight line that means the factors of production are yielding neither the economies nor the diseconomies of scope and it is leading to the proportionate change in output if your production possibility curve is concave to origin. Now if you look, you can produce more number of units of car as compared to this situation, right? Thus, we can see that when the production possibility curve is concave, it gives the size of economies of scope and when it is convex, it will give diseconomies of scope. That is, in producing the two, fact, two output jointly is not giving us that much amount of benefit. For calculation of degrees of economies of scope, we need to understand that degree of economies of scope is the percentage of cost saving that occurs when two or more than two products are produced jointly rather than individually. That is, if a firm is producing two different outputs together, we will look into the cost that is associated with it and we will look to the cost of producing both those outputs individually and we will compare the two. So, for the sake of understanding, let's assume CQ1 represents the cost of producing output that is q1 
CQ2 represents the cost of producing output Q2 and CQ1 Q2 represents the joint cost of producing both the outputs. On the basis of these given abbreviations, the degree of economies of scope can be represented by SC equals to CQ1 plus CQ2 minus CQ1 Q2 whole divided by CQ1 Q2. That is, it is summation of individual cost of production minus cost of producing jointly divided by cost of producing jointly. Now, if there is an economies of scope, then we will see that the degree is more than zero. That is, the summation of CQ1 plus CQ2 will be higher than CQ1 and Q2. In case of diseconomies of scope, we will see that this degree will be less than zero. That means CQ1 plus Q2 will be less than CQ1, Q2. That is cost of producing these two factors of production individually will be less than cost of producing them jointly. So on the basis of this simple explanation, we can understand the concept of degrees of economies of scope. The next thing that we are going to discuss is learning curve. See, by the name, it is very much self-explanatory that learning curves talks about how the process of learning helps us in performing a task in a much more better manner and a much more lesser time as we were doing it before. Simply speaking, learning curve shows that if a task is performed over and over by the laborers or by the people in the production process, then the time that is required will be less as compared to the time that was taken before. That means with successive performance of the task, less and less time is required for performing that task. The graphical representation of learning curve is also known as an experience curve. This is an example of a learning curve drawn by, known as Wright's learning curve model. Now if you look, as the successive units are produced by the producer, the time that is required for producing the output is decreasing in a very reasonable manner. This graph helps us in demonstrating that the cost per unit of output tends to decrease over time with the rise in experience level as well as rise in the repetition of doing that particular work. Learning curve is extensively used by organizations in planning their production, in planning the cost that is associated with production and in forecasting the deliveries and schedules. Now, this is a representation of Wright's cumulative average model that is used in learning curve. See, as per Wright's model, it is seen that Y is equal to A is time a cost that is required to produce the first unit. We will discuss about learning curve of Wright's cumulative average model. As per Wright, the learning curve function is defined as Y is equal to A x by B x to power b, where y is the cumulative average labor hours per unit, a is the time required to produce the first unit, x is the cumulative number of unit produced and b is slope of the function that is log of learning rate divided by log of 2. 
assume there is a situation where the cumulative output is given and the learning rate or the learning curve is taken as 80%. That means by this what we understand is when a producer is producing a unit and as the amount of unit doubles that is from first the double is 2 then 2 to 4, 4 to 8 there is a learning of 80% that means the time that is required will be 80% of the time that was taken in producing the initial unit. See, let's say in producing one unit in 80% a producer is taking cumulative average labor hours as 100. In producing one unit the cumulative labor hours required is 100. As the output doubles from 1 to 2, the cumulative labor hours will become 80% of 100. That is 180% is equal to 80. When the output is doubled from 2 to 4, it will be 80% of the time. That is 80% of 80, that is 64. And when the output doubles from 4 to 8, the time that is required again will become 80% of 64 that is 51.2 so this is a numerical representation of it so let's get back to this example now the cumulative output is given as 1 2 4 and 8 the cumulative labor hours will be calculated by 100 x key power 1 minus 0.322 where log of 0.8 log of 8 by log of 2 is 0.32196 so, for the first unit it is 100, then it is 160, then it is 256, then it is 409. The cumulative average labor hours are calculated. Now, assume the prices that are paid to the labor is 40, that is average price. So, the prices will become 4000, 6400, 10240 and 16384. They are calculated by multiplying the money that is paid for labors into the hours that is involved in producing. The average cumulative average labor cost will be calculated by multiplying your wages paid into units of average labor hours. So 40 into 100, 4000, 40 into 80, that is 3000. 240 into 64, 2560 and 40 into 50.2 that is 2048. Now if you look, during this production process, the average labor cost is continuously going down. Initially it was 4000, then 3200, then 2560 and at the last it is 2048. That means as the output is doubling, the laborers, the workers, they are enhancing their skills. Their learning is proceeding and with the learning, the time of production is going down. Thus, the cost of production or average cost of production is continuously decreasing. According to Pydip and Rubenfield, there are different reasons that are responsible for your learning curve. The first reason is the workers they tend to become more experienced by doing the same work again and again thus leading to reduction in the time that is required in doing that work. Secondly, the managers they become more experienced in handling the production process thus it helps in increasing the efficiency of the production thus reducing the cost specialization and sophistication tools they help in bringing the cost of production or average cost of production down the suppliers who are assisting the production they learn to procure or to supply the material in an efficient manner thus bringing the overall time of production down. 
Thus, we can summarize that as the producer keeps on producing extra units of an output due to all these factors, overall efficiency and effectiveness of the production function increases, thus reducing the time that is required in production and thus bring down the average cost of production. This is all about economies of scope and learning curve. Thank you.